All right, let's dive into the world of marketing today. We're taking on the five-step marketing plan, 2021 edition by Lewis English. Consider this your own personal marketing strategy session. We're pulling out those golden nuggets of wisdom to help you on your business journey no matter where you are. It's amazing how this book really emphasizes a holistic approach. You know, it moves beyond just flashy tactics. It's about really weaving your company's core values into every single customer interaction. So it's like marketing IS, the business itself, mm -hmm. not just a department. Exactly. The book has this great analogy to illustrate that. Imagine trying to sell a mystery box. Nobody knows what's inside. That's exactly what it's like trying to market without truly understanding your business and its values. That makes perfect sense. I wouldn't buy a mystery box, would you? The book actually mentions a company that made that mistake. They wasted a whopping 30,000 pounds on marketing materials, all because they skipped that crucial self-reflection stage. Ouch. That's an expensive lesson for sure. But it really highlights how crucial that foundation is. Speaking of foundations, did you find the foreword a bit unexpected? The one about the Apollo 11 mission? What does landing on the moon have to do with marketing, right? Right. But then it clicked. It's all about challenging those assumptions. NASA had to completely rethink their whole approach to reach the moon. It's a powerful parallel. Just like NASA ditching the straight shot to the moon idea, businesses have to adapt. The most effective path isn't always the most obvious one. And this ties directly into what the book calls focus, which goes way beyond just having a simple mission statement. OK, so let's break down this whole focus thing. There are multiple parts to it, right? Absolutely. It starts with your mission. Like, why does your company even exist? The reason you do what you do, take Google, for example, their mission is to organize the world's information, ambitious, simple, and it guides everything they do. That does sound a bit fluffy to me, though. Do customers really care about a company's mission? Don't they just care about what the company offers? That's a great question. And the book addresses this head on. It's not just about slapping a mission statement on your website and calling it a day. It's about actually living those values. And that shines through in how you interact with everyone, not just your customers. Or walking the walk, not just talking the talk. Exactly. And this is where priorities are important. If your actions don't match what you say your values are, your marketing will just fall apart. It's like trying to run in two directions at once. That's a great image. Yeah. But how do we take all this internal stuff, the mission, the values, the priorities, and make it something that customers can actually grasp? Uh -huh. That's where the message comes in, right? Exactly. You have to translate those core elements into something relatable and something meaningful for your target audience. And speaking of the target audience, that's another super important piece of the puzzle. It's not enough to just know their age or location or income. You need to dig deeper, like what motivates them? What are their desires? What are their pain points? A lot of businesses miss the mark here. It's like that mystery box again. If you don't really know what your customers want, you can't really offer them anything of value. And I bet this is where that company personality comes in. Like, how do you want to be perceived as a company? Think of it this way. Apple, Dell, and Radeon are all in the tech space, but their personalities are totally different. This shapes their brand voice, you know, mm -hmm. and how they actually connect with customers. It's like choosing friends. We are naturally drawn to personalities that click with us. I see what you mean. Customers are drawn to brands that resonate with their own personal values and style. So it's not just about features and benefits. It's about that deeper connection. Right. But of course, benefits are still important. What tangible value do customers get by choosing you? But it all comes together in the physical branding, like your logo, colors, tagline. It's the outward expression of all those things we discussed. So it's like the visual and verbal shorthand of your brand. This whole focus thing is making a lot more sense now. But I'm also realizing how easy it is to get lost in the weeds, especially when you're really in the thick of things and using all that industry jargon. You've hit on a super important point. The book really highlights the dangers of using jargon. Like it can create a barrier between you and your customers. Do you remember that Sally Ann test? That was a great example of how important it is to really consider other people's perspectives. It made me wonder if we often assume that our customers know more than they do. We need to step outside of our own bubbles and use language that they actually understand. Absolutely. This is also where the book's emphasis on writing down your plan really hit home for me. There's a study mentioned in the book. It showed that people are 42% more likely to actually achieve their goals if they write them down. I've heard that before, but never applied that to my marketing. So how does this tie into the SMARTY principle from the book? SMARTY stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, timely, individual, and evaluated. 
The book goes really deep into how each of these elements builds a strong plan. Okay, I need to hear more about this Smarty principle. It sounds like a very powerful tool. It really is. And a written plan built on these principles will really help minimize that wasted effort. And it helps you adapt when those unexpected things happen. That's a good point. So we've talked about focus and writing down the plan. Where does strategy fit into all this? A solid strategy takes your focus and turns it into actual steps to reach your marketing goals. The book uses this great analogy, the counting to 20 game. Have you ever played that? Oh, yeah. Total chaos. Everyone's trying to count at the same time. Nobody's listening. Exactly. Just like those players struggling without communication and a shared plan. Companies can't succeed if their marketing efforts are all over the place. It highlights the need for that unified approach, a roadmap for your marketing journey. So that roadmap is the strategy, right? Like mm -hmm. the analogy in the book. You wouldn't just start walking from Land's End to John O'Groats without a map. Exactly. But here's the thing. We get so attached to our plans sometimes, even when they're clearly not working. The book calls this the sunk cost fallacy. Oh, I've been there. Yeah. You've already invested so much time and money, you're, you're almost afraid to change direction, even when it's clear you need to. It's a common trap. The book uses the example of BlackBerry that clung to those physical keyboards and totally missed the smartphone revolution. It's a stark reminder that adaptability is key especially in the always changing world of marketing. I remember when everybody had a BlackBerry. It's crazy how fast things change. So once you have a solid strategy mm. and you're ready to adapt, how do you choose the right tactics? This is where the book gets super practical. It makes it very clear that not every tactic is right for every business. It's like ordering from a restaurant menu. You don't get everything. You choose what you want and what fits your needs. I love that analogy. It takes the pressure off feeling like you have to do everything. So what kind of marketing tactics does the book cover? It covers a wide range, website, photography, written content, social media, email marketing, public relations, events, networking, video, SEO, PPC, even door-to-door -door marketing and leaflets. Wow, that's a lot to take in. So does the book give us any guidance on which tactics are best for which situations? Absolutely. It explains the pros and cons of each tactic and the ideal situations to use them, helping you narrow it down based on your goals and your target audience. Okay, let's say we've picked our tactics. How do we actually put them into action? What does the book say about implementation? This is where things get really personalized. The book recognizes that startups and established companies face different challenges. It actually has two different implementation plans. That makes sense. A one-size-fits-all approach wouldn't work here. So what are some of the key takeaways from each plan? For startups, it stresses planning before taking action, especially with website design. You don't want to just rush into building a website without a clear idea of its function, style, and purpose. Makes sense. First impressions are important. Yeah. And your website is often that first point of contact with potential customers. Exactly. And for established businesses, the book says to really evaluate your current marketing efforts. Are they still aligned with your new focus and strategy? Or are you holding on to outdated tactics because of that sunk cost fallacy we talked about? Right. It's about being honest yeah. and letting go of what's not working, even if it means losing some past investments. Absolutely. Both plans give lots of practical tips for making the most of content and social media and other specific marketing efforts. It's like a tactical toolbox filled with useful advice. Speaking of content, the book had some great points about making your writing stand out. Remember that mystery box? Well, your content shouldn't be a mystery either. That's a great connection. The book stresses knowing your audience and creating content that really speaks to their needs and interests. It also highlights the power of storytelling. People naturally connect with stories. So try to weave stories into your content, whether it's blogs, website copy, or even social media updates. I love that. A good story can make even the most boring information engaging and memorable. What about video? I've always been a bit intimidated by creating videos. I understand. But the book encourages a just-do-it approach. Don't get stuck trying to make something super polished and expensive. Focus on the message. So it's okay to start simple, yeah. even just using my phone. Absolutely. Do you remember that Dollar Shave Club video that went viral? They filmed that for only $4,500. It was the humor and authenticity that people loved, not the fancy production. That's inspiring. It's easy to get caught up in trying to make everything perfect. But sometimes the simple approach is the most effective. Now, what about photography? Good visuals are important but hiring a professional can be expensive. The book recommends looking into collaborations, especially for startups. Networking events can be a great way to connect with talented photographers who are also trying to build their portfolios. It could benefit both businesses. 
That's a great tip. It's all about being resourceful and creative. Let's talk about social media. It can feel so overwhelming trying to keep up with all the platforms and trends. Mm. Where do you even start? The book gives some good advice. Be strategic. You don't need to be on every platform. Choose the platforms where your target audience hangs out and focus on those. It also says to be consistent. Don't just randomly post content. Have a schedule so your audience knows what to expect. Right. If you're not consistent, people aren't going to follow you or care about your content. The book says social media is more than just broadcasting your message. It's about building relationships. Right? Exactly. Respond to comments and questions. Join conversations. Show your audience that you're listening. So it's not just about yelling into the void. It's about having a conversation. Now, the book also talks about some more specialized areas of marketing, like SEO, PPC, and PR. Those can be hard to figure out, especially if you don't have a lot of experience. What does it say about tackling those? It recognizes that those are areas where getting help from an expert is often a good idea. But it also stresses understanding and being involved in everything. So don't just blindly trust an expert to handle everything without your input. Exactly. Ask a lot of questions. Make sure you're comfortable with their strategies. And get regular updates and reports. Transparency is key. It seems like a theme is emerging here. This book really empowers you to take control of your own marketing even if you are working with outside experts. You're right. It emphasizes that you are the expert on your business, and any marketing should match your vision and goals. Before we finish up this section, I want to talk about branding. It's such a crucial part of marketing. The book offers some great insights. Branding is super personal and subjective. The book recommends collaboration and getting feedback from a variety of sources, especially your target customers. Because you might love a name or a logo, but if it doesn't resonate with your audience, it's not going to be effective. Exactly. It's about finding that balance where your vision matches what your customers want. This has been an amazing deep dive into website design, content creation, and branding. I'm already thinking about how to use these tips in my own business. It's amazing what we can learn from each other and from resources like this book. But, you know, all this knowledge is only really useful if we put it into action. And that leads us to the last step, arguably the most important one in this five-step marketing plan, evaluation. Time to see what's working and what isn't. But I've always found this part a little intimidating, like putting your work under a microscope. I understand. It can feel like judgment day. But the book says to think of evaluation not as a pass or fail test, but as a chance to learn. It's about finding those small improvements, the tiny tweaks that can make a huge difference over time. Just like Novak Djokovic, always refining his technique to get those amazing wins. But where do you even start? with evaluating your marketing. It feels a bit overwhelming. The book gives us a clear framework. Start by going back to your original strategy document. What were your goals? What were you trying to achieve? Because those objectives should guide your whole evaluation. So if your goal was to raise brand awareness, you'd measure success differently than if your goal was to get leads. Exactly. You have to match your evaluation metrics to your objectives. Once you're clear on that, you can start to analyze the different tactics you used and how they did against those goals. I love the questions the book suggests asking for each tactic. Things like, how well did this tactic work on a scale of one to 10? Mm. Or what could we have done better? It really forces you to be honest with yourself. And don't just focus on what you could have done differently. The book also reminds us to think about the things outside your control. Things happen that you just can't predict. Right, like a sudden change in the market or a new competitor appearing out of nowhere. So you need to consider those external factors and not blame yourself for things you couldn't have avoided. Exactly. Even when things don't go to plan, there's always a lesson to learn. I appreciate how the book emphasizes learning from what we might think of as failures. It's not about pointing fingers. It's about finding those insights that can help you make better plans in the future. It's about turning those failures into steps toward future success. The book also talks about tracking the right metrics not just things like website visits or social media followers. So what kind of metrics should we actually be paying attention to? The metrics that are directly tied to your business goals. Like if you're trying to increase sales, track things like leads generated, conversion rates, and customer lifetime value. It's about focusing on the numbers that really make a difference for your business. This all makes perfect sense. But why is evaluation so important? What do we gain from it? The book describes it perfectly. Evaluation allows for marginal gains those small improvements that add up to big results over time. Think back to those tiny adjustments Novak Djokovic made to his game. 
or NASA constantly tweaking their approach during the Apollo 11 mission. It's all about continuous improvement. It's like they say, the only thing that stays the same is change. So we have to always be evaluating, refining, and adapting our marketing to stay ahead. Exactly. It's not a one-time thing. This five-step marketing plan is really a cycle. You evaluate, you learn, and then you use that knowledge to make your next plan even better. It's like a feedback loop, always getting better. This has been an awesome deep dive into marketing. We've explored all five steps of Lewis English's plan, focus, strategy, tactics, implementation, and evaluation. We've learned how important it is to understand your business, your customers, and to create a plan that works for both. You know what's so great about this framework? It works for any business. No matter how big or small or what industry you're in, the principles are universal. It's just about applying them to your own unique situation. And that's what we hope you take away from this deep dive. Don't be afraid to try things, analyze what happens, and adapt. That's the key to marketing that really gets results. And as you continue on your business journey, we want to leave you with a final thought. Knowing what you know now, what's one small change you can make today to improve your marketing? It could be as simple as revisiting your target audience, maybe tweaking your website copy, or trying new tactic on social media. There are so many possibilities. So go out there and market with confidence. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time.